So you're thinking of moving to Longwood and you've heard mixed reviews? I saw one real estate agent with lots of YouTube videos and subscribers actually list Longwood on her top 10 places you don't want to live. Are you kidding me? Some of the best residential communities in the entire Southeast have a Longwood address. In this video, I'll show you why Longwood is indeed one of the best places to live in the Orlando area. Roll it. Hey everybody, it's Doug Packard with Real Living in Orlando, Florida and broker at Blue River Realty Group in Seminole County. We get lots of questions about Longwood and the Orlando area and we're more than happy to share a lifetime's worth of knowledge with you. Call, text, or email us anytime, day or night. I'll make you this promise. If we choose to work together, I'll never pass you off to a team member with little or no experience doesn't know what in the heck they're doing you'll work personally with me. One more thing, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and bell button so you'll be notified when we post a new video. Now let's dive into Longwood. Located about 15 miles north of downtown Orlando, Longwood is known for its quaint downtown, its historic buildings, its clean waterways, including Lake Brantley and the Wakiver River, its golf courses, its multi-use parks, its heavily wooded subdivisions, and its luxury gated communities. Let's check out downtown first. I'm here at downtown Longwood. Behind me is the Longwood Village Inn. It's an old historic hotel that's been converted into office buildings. Downtown Longwood has uh, several historic buildings. It's not a huge downtown, but it's definitely worth going and taking a, a walk around it. They have concerts and farmers markets here. Uh, so it's a good place to go. Uh, I'll show you around here real quick. There's a organic farm market and a couple little shops and restaurants downtown and the historic bar room, of course. And that's Christ Church. It's a historic Episcopal church. And Longwood is served by the SunRail system, which is a commuter rail system for the Orlando area. And the train station is right downtown. This is Ryder Park. It's a relatively new park. I used to pitch batting practice to my kids there at a baseball field, but they turned the baseball field into a city park but it's a really nice park there are uh, that's a 360 degree view there that's the amphitheater area all that grass you see and there's a uh, band shell and stage area that's it right there And every Saturday morning, they have farmer's markets in kind of a rarity at farmer's markets these days, there's actual produce there. A lot of it locally grown. They've got tennis and pickleball courts. That's the hospital in the background there. Basketball courts. Got a little fishing dock and a lake with a boardwalk around it. That's the Longwood Community Building. It looks old, but it's uh, relatively new. This is the Seminole Wakaiba Trail, which is a bike trail 
part of the 40 miles of bike trails in Seminole County. It runs through the Markham Woods area of Longwood. And the Cross Seminole Trail runs through Soldiers Creek Park, which is right here. It's a multi-use park. There's a six field girls fast pitch softball complex. It's a destination for a lot of tournaments. And of course they have league games there too. Very well equipped. There's the batting cages. It's very well maintained. Just a couple of years old. There's some live action there. There's a wilderness area trail in Soldiers Creek Park that runs through Spring Hammock. Um, actually, several different branches of that trail. You can ride a bike on it as well. There's a also a mountain bike trail that you see here. There's a bike repair station, place to wash your bike. And then the entrance to the trails, there are different levels of difficulty on these mountain bike trails and I found out the hard way that when you're walking or I'm sorry riding these trails you better wear a helmet even even on the ones of lesser difficulty just take my word for it but it is a beautiful place to to ride your mountain bike that's the cross Seminole trail where it intersects with Soldiers Creek Park This to me is one of the most beautiful places in the state, Wakaiba Springs State Park. You'll see it spelled a couple of different ways. It's a 6,000 acre state park centered around a natural spring where the water is 72 degrees year round. You see the, the land slopes down to the spring. This particular day this was videoed was a holiday, so it's uh, pretty crowded. I see guests going on a weekday, you know, a lot fewer people there and, and uh, you'll enjoy yourself more. It's a great place for kayaking, canoeing, paddle boarding, and you can rent all three of those right there at the state park. And you'd be canoeing down the, or kayaking or paddle boarding down the Wakaiba River, which is 18 miles long. A number of paid roads in Wakaiba Springs State Park, all kind of terrain to explore, lots of trails, some for walking, some for biking. There's some folks kayaking down the Wakaiba River. It empties into the St. Johns River. This is Rolling Hills Park. It's a a park that um, was, it was actually a golf course that was purchased by Seminole County after it closed and they turned it into an 85 acre park. Well, let's explore some of Longwood's most popular neighborhoods and we'll start with Sweetwater Oaks. Sweetwater is the largest development in Longwood with over 4,000 homes. We're here in Sweetwater Oaks, which is a huge residential community, and we're at Sweetwater Beach, which uh, is one of the amenities of Sweetwater Oaks. Uh, Sweetwater Oaks has over 4,000 homes, and you know, they're built from the early 70s uh, up until probably late, late uh, 2010, 2011, something like that. Um, but a, a large variety of homes, uh, nicely wooded, curvilinear streets, um, just uh, one of the one of the finest communities around. And this is by far my favorite amenity, personally. Um, if you don't like water sports, or, uh, fishing, skiing, wakeboarding, uh, that type of thing, then you may not use this, but it's a great amenity to have. They've got beach volleyball here, a playground and a boat ramp. You can drop a jet ski or boat in here really easily. And, and uh, got a nice sandy beach and this is a beautiful lake. It's got really clear water. Um, let's take a better look. So Water Beach is on 
Lake Brantley, which is a 350-acre sand bottom spring-fed ski lake. You see the white sandy beach there. This will be packed on the weekends. They actually have a deputy from the sheriff's department to make sure no folks from outside the neighborhood come. Everybody in or all Sweetwater Oaks residents have access to Lake Brantley, but there is no public access to the lake. There's a picnic pavilion. Another look at the sandy beach and the clear water there in the swimming area. You'll see a lot of folks tubing, kneeboarding, wakeboarding, water skiing. And this is River Front Park at Sweetwater Oaks, another great amenity. It's got a, a playground for the kids. Got a full baseball field, which doubles as a, the outfield doubles as a soccer field. There's the tennis and pick and pickleball courts and a full basketball court and a couple of half courts. This is a um, kayak and canoe launch where you just uh, roll your kite or carry your kayak down there and roll it right into the water. And somebody's getting a fly fishing lesson there. And you can store your canoes and kayaks down at Riverfront Park. That's a pavilion. It's currently got some work going on there. There's a nature walk down to the Wakiva River at the Riverfront Park. It's my favorite park. Beautiful walk through, uh, through Florida river swamp and you'll end up at the Wakiva River. See some kayakers and a guy in a fishing boat there. There's another look at some typical homes. Large variety, pretty much all were custom built. There's a country club, Sweetwater Country Club. It's actually most of it is in Orange County. This is Wakaiva, which is uh, another large community. There's 2,500 homes in Wakaiva, a little more affordable or on the affordable side. That's Hunt Club Boulevard, which is the main drag through Wakaiva. Wakaiva has seven or eight different parks. Uh, this is one of the bigger ones, Wakaiva Hills Park. It's got a baseball field. You see the playground equipment and swings, tennis and pickleball. At the community center and office for the uh, homeowners association is right there in Wakaiva Hills Park. There's some more typical homes in Wakaiva. That's Wakaiva Lake Park across the street from Wakaiva Hills Park. And that lake is stocked with fish. It's got walkways around it. It's a pretty place. Everything from condos and townhomes. These are some of the condos and these are zero lot line homes in Wakaiva. There's a golf course, Wakaiva Golf Club. It's a semi-private course, which means the public can play there and there are also memberships available. More homes, you can see it's, it's cut out of a uh, heavily wooded piece of land. They've got nice trees, very established neighborhood. And this is another one of the larger parks, Duncan Park. It's got 
big sandbox and playground for the kids. Another little fishing lake. Tennis and pickleball. And Wakaba is known for its 18 miles of bike paths that, that uh, run behind the houses. Where else are you going to find 18 miles in one neighborhood of bike paths? It's pretty amazing. There's also an elementary school right within Wakaiva called Wakaiva Elementary. It's one of the better elementary schools in the county. This is Holderness Park. It's got handball, a handball court and a full basketball court and Hot lot, big sandbox, and playground equipment for the kids. And right within the entrance of Wakaiva is a public grocery store. This is Sable Point, another 2000 home development. Sable Point is another one of these communities that's cut out of the Wakaiva River Basin, so it's heavily wooded. All the homes are pretty unique. Definitely not cookie cutter. There are a couple of parks in Sable Point. Got a baseball field there along with basketball. Sable Point Elementary is right within the community. It's one of the best schools in the Orlando area. I'm in the Sable Point Wildlife Sanctuary. It's a buffer area between the Sable Point development and the Wakaiba River. You'll see a lot of wildlife back here. I'm the only one back here right now. It's very quiet, but you'll see uh, deer, wild turkeys, occasional bear, but great amenity to have, great place to uh, connect yourself with nature and definitely wild. Nicely cut trail through the woods. Here's a 360 degree view of the jungle, if you can keep from getting dizzy. There's another park in Sable with a basketball court and playground. More homes, mostly custom built. And this is the old Sable Point Golf Course, which is another golf course that closed. The Homeowners Association purchased the golf course and made a nice big park out of it. And that brings us to the Springs, right off of 434, close to I-4. It's a gated community, about 1,200 homes, very unique. It's built around a spring, and that's one of the amenities, uh, being able to swim in the spring year-round. Kind of a reversal of roles. The developer purchased the, the spring and the surrounding property from the county, which used it as a park. It was called San Lando Springs but it pumps millions of gallons of water into the Little Wakaiba River. The Springs has all kind of homes. It's got uh, state homes that you see here on acreage. It's got zero lot line homes. As well as uh, numerous condos and townhomes. 
That's the clubhouse and community center for the springs. And look at those beautiful oak trees. Hundreds of years old. There's a couple of community pools. Playground and sandbox there for the kids. All unique custom built homes. And even has a stable where you can keep your horses and a place to ride, as well as tennis courts and dedicated pickleball courts. Full basketball court. And a nature walk with a boardwalk. And you'll see a lot of wildlife. There's a little fawn with his mama. There you can walk, uh, get off the boardwalk and walk along the Little Wakaiver River, which you see here. It's, it's um, not much more than a creek, but it does empty into the big Wakaiver River. This is, the Springs is an absolute nature lover's paradise. You, you'd never get tired of it. And this is Aliqua, which is a luxury gated community about 275 homes or so. All lots are an acre plus. The homes, except one small section, the homes are all custom built. And there's Aliqua Country Club, nice golf course, very challenging. That's the clubhouse. Let's look at a golf hole. Heavily wooded area, also in the Wakaiver River Basin. One thing to note, the Aliqua is on septic systems and that can be an issue uh, the closer you get to the Wakaiba River the more water issues you're going to have uh, standing water issues and most of the drain fields are elevated for that reason this is Wingfield Reserve it's a it's not gated, but also along the Markham Woods Corridor and part of the Wakaiva River Basin. Acre lots, all custom homes. Heavily wooded. There's a couple of hundred homes in Wingfield too. Big variety of styles in Wingfield. And this is Springs Landing. It's also along the Markham Woods Corridor, not gated. There's an estate section up front where the lots are an acre plus. The main part of the neighborhood, the lots are, I'd say half acre plus. There's a community building there, playground and swimming pool and tennis and basketball courts and pickleball courts. Aliqua Lakes has a Longwood address, but is actually closer to Lake Mary and it's featured in our Lake Mary video. If you'd like a more in-depth look, you can see that at the top of your screen or in the cards. There's a good look at the Legacy Club, which is at Aliqua Lakes. It's also a designated Audubon Sanctuary. That's the Legacy Club Clubhouse. 
again, it's a almost a wildlife sanctuary there. It's a community pool, seven acre park. This is the Woodlands, a more affordable community, about 900 homes built in the 70s, heavily wooded. These homes were built by Greater Construction, which is a local developer. There's a uh, park of several acres for the Woodlands and right outside the entrance to the Woodlands is uh, Woodlands Elementary. Lake Brantley, Lake Mary, and Lyman High all serve the Longwood area. It just depends on where you live in Longwood. And finally, South Seminole Hospital, which is part of the Orlando Health System, is located right in downtown Longwood. Well, that wraps up our Longwood tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, I don't know about you, but after seeing that, I sure wouldn't call Longwood one of the worst places to live in the Orlando area. You can see now why it's one of the best. Don't forget you can call, text, or email us anytime. We're always here for you. And again, if you contact us from these videos, you'll work directly with me, not someone else. I've had an eight-person team in the past, and the truth is the buyer suffers because the service you receive just gets watered down. I just won't do business that way. We'll see you next video. Hey, if you enjoyed that Longwood video, then be sure to check out our Lake Mary video and be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.